In my original review of the Radio Master Boxer, I said that this was the perfect radio for me. That was largely because it is what I class as a full-size radio in a compact form factor. It has all of the switches and buttons I'll ever need, full-size gimbals which are upgradable, you have that Edge TX operating system and a built-in 1 watt Express LRS module with a full-size JR Bay. The real party piece on this radio though is the size, the weight and the fact that it has phenomenal battery life as well. Now it's been a few months with my hands on this and I'm pleased to be able to say that my opinion has not changed and genuinely I believe this radio is close to perfect. However, there are some things that I have done on it. I've upgraded to the CNC gimbals, the AG01s, which are just brilliant. But what I haven't done is touched the software. Since receiving this radio, I have not upgraded Edge TX. And whilst I have upgraded the Express LRS system once, it isn't currently on the current version. What I'm going to do today is walk you through the process of upgrading both Edge TX and Express LRS on this radio. And then at the end, I will share with you a few more thoughts having spent some time with it over the last few months. Now, just to be clear up front, Radio Master did originally send me this radio for free. However, I was never paid to make that original review. I've not been paid to make this video. And as always, my thoughts are entirely my own. Now, supply of the Boxer has been quite short for a while. But if you are interested in getting one, there is a link to the Radio Master website where you can place an order. Just to be clear again, that is an affiliate link. Radio Master is the only company that I do use affiliate links with. But if you don't want to use that, you should be able to order it at your normal FPV retailer or just go directly to Radio Master yourself. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is just talk about the hardware upgrades that I've made first, and then we'll move on to upgrading the software. So, as I said at the start, in my review I said this radio is perfect for me and basically that opinion has not changed. I do though have a few more things that I've picked up on having spent some time with it. Overall, all of the things that I mentioned in the original review stand today, the biggest really being that these two-way switches on the side should have been threes in my opinion. It isn't a major problem for people buying the radio for FPV, but if you're a wing user, you would definitely prefer to have three-way switches. In FPV, you're only usually having one or two modes anyway, so it really isn't a major issue. But if you're a wing user or a plane user, you're going to need a bit more. Now, I do know that you have those switches along the bottom there, the modes. However, something I will add is they are not easy to find when you are wearing FPV goggles. There's been a few occasions with bigger aircraft that I've been flying that I've programmed multiple modes along here. And trying to find one of them when you've got goggles on is difficult, they're not as raised as I would probably have liked, and it's a minor niggle that I didn't pick up in the original review, but have over the period of the radio. That though is about all I have found, and what outweighs any of the downsides to this radio is the size, the shape, the form factor, and the battery life. It is just phenomenal, especially when you're using it with that larger battery from Radio Master. Now, about the only thing that I have actually changed on this radio is the gimbals. The original gimbals that came with this one are the Radio Master V4s, which are very, very good, but I could not resist upgrading these to the AG01 CNC gimbals. Now, the CNC gimbals are a fantastic upgrade for this radio. Let's be honest up front, though. The original gimbals are not terrible. In fact, the V4 gimbal that Radio Master ships with the Boxer is very good as it comes. There is no great need to upgrade the stock gimbal from a performance point of view. What you get though with the CNC AG01s is a really lovely solid feel to the gimbal that you just can't get in plastic. You really notice this at the extremes, just how solid everything is. They are supremely smooth and just overall give a much nicer feel than you get on a plastic gimbal. But as I've already said, it's nothing to do with the fact that the stock gimbals are not good. It's just you can't be having metal. Now, being honest, the stick ends that come with the AG01s are not my favourite. I am going to change these at some point when I get a chance to put an order in. I'd like to try some of their more sticky ones like we've seen on the Zorro, but overall, the gimbal is just so much nicer. 
Now, I'm not going to walk you through the whole process on how to actually install the gimbals in this video, but it is fairly straightforward. The first thing you need to do is take the back cover off. That comes off without any issues. There's no wires that go between the front and back. You simply remove the four screws that hold the existing gimbal in place, carefully disconnect the wiring from the PCB and withdraw the gimbal from the radio. Then you simply do the reverse, take the AGO one, place it back in, put the four screws back in, making sure that you're using the correct screws because there are different lengths and then reconnecting the wiring and once finished, performing a calibration to ensure that they're working as expected. So as you've seen, the overall installation process is not particularly difficult. It's fairly straightforward. And what it does do is just give you that nice solid feel on the gimbals. They might not be an absolute must have, but they certainly are a very nice addition to this radio and it just tops it off. The next thing we're going to do is talk about software because as I mentioned at the start, since getting this radio, I really have not touched it. I did update Express LRS I think once, but I haven't touched the HTX system. So what we're going to do first of all is look at upgrading HTX and the simplest way to do that. And then we'll move on to the Express LRS side of things. Depending on when you got your boxer, it may have come with a pre-release version of HTX or the public release. To check this, what you want to do is go into the system menu, scroll across until you find the version information. So there it is. It's menu seven. I could have just gone back to get to it. And here we can see that we're on HTX boxer version 2.8.0 factory now this is the pre-release version that i got with this radio i have not upgraded it since now the simplest way to actually update your edge tx based radio today is with the edge tx buddy this is a web browser flashing interface that allows you to update the firmware on compatible radios without having to install any software on your pc this is probably the simplest way we have today to update the firmware and whilst there are are other ways of doing it this is the method I'm going to walk you through in this video now to do this the first thing you're going to want to do is actually turn your radio off we're then going to plug in the USB cable and allow it to connect and what you will see is the radio flash the lights back and forth until it goes solid there we then head over to the TX Buddy website. We're going to select the version we want to install. We're going to select our radio, which is the Radio Master Boxer. Click Flash via USB. We're then going to click Add New Device. And what we want to find is this here called STM32 Bootloader. Click Connect. Click Next. Click Start Flashing. And this will begin the flash process on the radio. What it will then do is flash the radio with the latest firmware. The display on the radio will stay blank. All you will have on is that single LED that you can see here. And all you do at this point is wait for the flashing process to complete. Once complete, you will see that it will say your radio has been flashed with Edge TX. Now that's done, we can then power the radio back up and we should now be on the latest version. So if we go back into the system menu, go back, you can now see that we're on Edge TX Boxer version 2.8.3 Flying Dutchman and we now have all of the latest info showing down there. Now that process updates the main radio firmware itself, but what it doesn't update is the internal Express LRS module. To do that, you need to use another piece of software and specifically the Express LRS configurator. The process is actually similar and I'm going to walk you through that now as well. Now again, the first thing we need to do is check what version of firmware our Express LRS module in the radio is on. To do this, we're going to go into the system menu and you want to select under tools, the Express LRS Lua script. This is the app that allows you to do all of the configuration. We then go into this, allow it to connect. And if you scroll to the bottom, it'll tell you what version of firmware you are already on. And you can see on mine, I'm on 3.2.0. Now, the first thing you'll need to do is download the latest version of the Express LRS configurator. I'll put a link to the web page where you can get this, or if you've already got it, you'll need to make sure that you have the latest version installed. It's available for PC and Mac, and you simply install this, and then you can proceed with the update. So now I've got the companion installed. What we're going to do is plug in the USB cable. Now, it is the top port that you need to be using. That is the communications port for the radio. And we're going to be selecting USB serial 
VCP, and that is the communication for the radio to connect to the computer. Once the configurator is installed and you open it up, you're then ready to select the options. Now, the first thing you need to do at the top is select the firmware version. If we click on releases, you'll see all of the previous releases shown here. My radio in my screen showed that I had 3.2.0 installed, and we can see the latest version today is version 3.2.1, and that is the latest public release. If I also wanted to see pre-release firmware, we could simply click this box here, but today we're going to stick with the public latest versions. Next, scrolling down, we select the target. So from this, we want to find the Radio Master option, which is Radio Master 2.4 gigahertz. And then we want to find our device in the list. You'll see here we have all of the Ranger modules and all of the other stuff as well. However, today we're doing the Boxer, so we simply want Radio Master Boxer 2400TX. Next, we want to select the flashing method. As we're doing this over USB, we're going to use Edge TX pass-through. However, if you was doing it in different methods, either via Wi-Fi or the UART, you could select those options as well. But again, we're going to stick with this one for this video. Finally, at the bottom is where you will find the main options. Now, I'm going to keep this in standard mode. There is a manual flashing mode available. However, that is for experienced users, and there's no real need to touch on that for most people's use. We're going to make sure that we've got the regulatory domain set correctly. I leave mine as that one there. We're going to make sure that we've got my binding phrase installed. This is already pre-filled with my binding phrase that I use on all my radios. If you don't know how the Express LRS system works, it is as simple as having your own binding phrase that you program into each part of the system. That way, when you flash them, they will all connect and work fine. You can do a manual binding process. However, personally, I prefer to use the binding phrase. Then over this side here we have a few other options such as the auto Wi-Fi on interval which allows the radio to enter Wi-Fi when it's left over time and then you've got the home Wi-Fi options here. For me today we're going to leave it simply as this. Finally at the bottom what we're going to do is go down and select our COM port for our radio. Mine is currently on COM port 23 and you can see that via the option that says ST Microelectronics and then we're going to select build and flash. Now the building process can take a little time. What it has to do is download the correct packages for your system and then transfer that over USB to program the radio. Once the compiling is complete, it will then start to write the firmware to the radio over the USB. This is the point where you can sometimes get an error if there's a problem with the communication. But as you can see here, mine's going through no problem at all. You can see once that's done, it says success at the bottom and the radio has been updated. Now that's done, if we then go again back into the Express LRS Lua script on the radio, scroll down, and you can see under the firmware version, it is now showing version 3.2.1. So that's the Express LRS firmware updated on the radio as well. But there is one more thing you may need to do, and that is update the Express LRS Lua script. That is the app that allows you to do the configuration, and I'm going to quickly walk you through how to do that now. So again, we're going to need to plug in the USB, but this time we need to select the storage option to allow us to access that onboard SD card on our computer. Again, you need to go to the Express LRS configurator and here you will see a button that says download Lua script. This will take you to your files and allow you to download the latest version that is available today. And you can see that is version three. We're then going to copy that latest Lua script file and place it on our SD card that's on the radio. That SD card should now be showing as a drive on your PC. You then open it up, go into the scripts folder, go into tools, and here you would replace the existing Express LRS Lua script. As you can see, mine is already version 3. However, there may be new versions available in the future, and that is how you would update it should you need to. So we've done the upgrades on the hardware and the software. Now, genuinely, I have to say, I think this radio is bloody fantastic. It has been an absolute pleasure to use. I continue to use it. It is my go-to radio that I use on a daily basis. And when I did the review, I said it was like Radio Master had listened to everything that I had asked for in a radio, mambo size form factor, but with Express LRS, one watt, and all of these features that we've got here. Genuinely, I don't really see a reason for 90% of people to look at something like a TX16S. It's a nice radio, it's a lovely radio, but it's just so big, and this for me is just 
perfect. And I also like the fact that it does come with that carry case as well and all of the other little bits that Radio Master include. Now, I do know the availability of this radio has been challenging. Hopefully it's going to get better as time goes on. As I said at the start, if you're interested in getting one of these, there is an affiliate link to it in the description. Overall, that is it. If you have found this video interesting, please do let me know what you think in the comment section. If you'd like to support the channel to allow us to keep making content in the future, please do consider checking out the link to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my patrons. We would not be able to keep doing this without their support. And if you'd like to support us to allow me to keep making content on this channel, please do consider checking it out. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. Stay safe. I'll speak to you soon.